Well, there you go. So, sir, um, album number five. <laughs> and uh, the title, as you've alluded to, uh, you know, Searching for Freedom. Um, I hope it doesn't take you your entire career to, to discover freedom, but uh, <laughs> you have five albums in. Um, are you any closer? <laughs> I had a really, um, I had a great comment from a friend the about a week ago and I put out like a, a post online because since the album's been out, we occasionally put out posts saying, you know, day, day 47 and, it, and I'll tell, I'll tell fans what I did that day. Hmm. And so I put out day 47 for searching for freedom. My friend said, man, I'm getting really anxious. I hope you find it soon. Um, we're getting closer. Five albums in, we are getting closer. That's for sure. Good. It's right there. It's it's right there. Um, a lot of freedom in making music, I find for sure. Um, it's one one of those things. It's I mean, the title could be the title could be taken for searching for freedom in the sense of everything that eludes responsibility. Which for me, I I don't necessarily feel a lack of freedom. Um, through the responsibilities that I have as like an independent musician or as I feel like as a semi-functioning member of society. And so it speaks a lot to um, this, the emotional, spiritual pursuit as well, you know, mm -hmm. for sure. Absolutely. And, and, and you, you refer to searching for freedom um, as a, as a new chapter. What, what informed that shift um, or the closing of the last chapter? I'm just quickly letting this plane pass. I'm going to close this one window. We live near an airport. No worries. Almost impossible to escape that noise. Yeah. yeah. It, it, I think it's, it, it's at such a... Um, what do they call it? The, 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 tone, the tone is so low that, yeah, as you say, you can't, uh, you can't escape it. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Um, what brought this to a new chapter? I think, I think most, I think each album has been a new chapter for me. So I felt like Laps Around the Sun kind of really spoke to the chapter of my life of chasing Laps Around the Sun, you know, trying to achieve the impossible, playing you know, 100 and 120 something shows that year in 2019 yes. around the world. And it spoke kind of to like, it spoke to the state of the status quo, I guess, of how we were all operating at that time. And it's hilarious that this whole concept of searching for freedom and the shift, so the shift in my life, the shift in society and the album have all kind of coincided naturally, mm. you know? Mm. Um, and so, yeah, that, that this time has been a very new chapter um, because of obviously what's happened, um, you know, in the world in the last year or two. And so this whole, and so it, it, it already was a new chapter, but it would have perhaps been more, a more familiar chapter if I was still playing shows but because I completely stopped playing shows as well. Um, it did really ring a new chapter to dive deeper and not be on the run, so to speak. Because mm, mm, mm. I think for, for a lot of artists, um, uh, if they were coming off the back of a tour, <clears throat> you know, of an extended period on the road, uh, kind of lockdown was, was, was something that, uh, you know, they, they, they had kind of built up reserves, so they were in a better position than those who were about to kind of head out. Um, but I, I was chatting to um, a South African group by the name of Good Luck, and they, like you, um, had literally just come off the road before everything kind of changed. And it afforded them, you know, an opportunity to really be introspective. And uh, because they, you know, like we all, we, none of us had a, you know, had a choice. Um, and they, they found the whole experience, you know, oddly cathartic. And I'm just <laughs> <laughs> airplanes it's okay no worries <laughs> no one's supposed to be flying for goodness sake <laughs> not where i live apparently these little <laughs> they're little they're little biplanes too they're the noisy ones as well um can you hear me now 
I can, no worries. <laughs> um, I, I would agree that, that because there was some, there was a sigh of relief. I would say that in one way, when all the shows, I felt, I felt, I remember this one moment where when the tour got cancelled and obviously the prospect of all those shows were getting cancelled. And in one way I was very joyous because it was like, oh, like that's a bit of reprieve, you know? And then I also almost in the same, same moment was like, but I, it may, makes me think of, it made me think of like the Chinese, like the old Chinese farmer kind of um, analogy of the, the man, the man has his horse and it runs away and they say, what well, bad luck. And then the horse brings back a bunch of wild horses and they say, what well, fantastic luck. And then his son is training one of the wild horses and breaks his leg and his neighbors say, what well, bad luck. And then army conscription comes and he's injured and can't go to war. And they say, what well, good luck. And the whole time the farmer says, maybe. And, um, and that's how I feel this whole experience has been because there's been such for me anyway, such, such incredibly awesome things that have come from it mixed with a deep, um, you know, some deep, deep, dark, harder times. You know, um, my partner's from overseas. She's from, she's from Europe. So she can't go back to her, see her family. Mm. Um, and the collective human experience there has undoubtedly, I think been like a lot going on. And so it has been, I would, this is how I put it simply. I think physically, it's been very good for me. I'd say physically, it's been very, very good. And I'd say, I would say that on a mental level, I would say it has brought challenges. That doesn't mean it's bad, but I think that like the, the mental challenge of the limbo that we can all be in as community, society, you know, country, whole world. Mm. That's the stuff that it, it is challenging us. You know, it's, it's, it, it, and it's, we, I am lucky that we built some reserves and that we were in a position that our first and foremost thing isn't trying to feed our family. Mm. And I feel for a lot of the people who are in that position right now, you know, so that is, I guess what I speak to of like the polarity of the whole situation, you know? Absolutely. No, absolutely. And I think, you know, as you say, the, um, <clears throat> everyone is, um, I wrote a, I wrote a piece last year saying that everyone's, uh, affected, but everyone is not affected. You know, it's a, it's a, it, it's a subtlety. Yes, that's that's beautiful. That's that freaking says it all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. But um, no, I think as I say, it's a, it's, it's a, I think an interesting opportunity, as you say, and it's, and it's hard when you know, kind of all of your, well, so many of your choices are taken away from you, and then you, you kind of have to go inward um, in order to. Yeah, kind of sustain and maintain which I think is 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 really interesting and I've been you know talking to your lyrics especially um I was I was wondering you know are they entirely autobiographic you know or are you you know certainly on this album did you find yourself interpreting the world around you more than speaking of your own life a good question and i have to think um and i'm just running through the songs in my head a lot of it is ordered by ordered by like autobiography kind of thing a lot of it is i would say there is uh i'd say it's like largely autobiographic and then i'd say second it is commentary uh second uh, second most of of the work i'd say would be like commentary a way that's metaphorical it's off my experience but like songs like circus mm. i've never been in a circus but it speaks to my experience of when life has felt like a circus or your internal space has felt like a circus um and then if i think songs like searching for freedom they kind of are for myself before the people they're not directly you know the song searching for freedom is kind of touching on core fundamentals of what i think Mm. like makes us who we are or helps us move forward mm. you know mm. um this this album this album you know i think of songs like um like feeling you you know is another track you know speaking outside of singles feeling you is another track that was kind of you know sitting about a meter away from where i am now and kind of contemplating 
the world and the cosmos and and making some you know there's a line it's track 11 off the album there's a line in there it's um says um there's dogs out in the streets chasing satellites and that's like you know Mm. speaks to kind of like uh the future or where we might have satellite pollution or where we already have satellite pollution now but where that sort of stuff actually might block our way to the stars and so there is there is bits and pieces you would pick in the album or you can interpret in the album that are um definitely speaking wider than just my own love and heartbreak experience and that's probably a big part of this album is it dives well outside of that typical space i love writing from that space of 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 the yin yang you know male female whatever you want to call it like that relationship dynamic um but it's been fun to expand for sure Mm, mm, mm. which then leads me to my next question which um clearly um searching for freedom um is a cathartic record for you or certainly was to make look for me absolutely it was very it was amazing to spend this much time making a record because it was like 13 or 14 months from when we started to when we finished and to my whole life shifted as far as it's quite an extreme so I went from touring and kind of short bursts weeks at a couple weeks here or there at home but really just living on my backpack kind of thing and um to barely leaving the suburb as far as I was surfing within the 100 kilometers of where I was and I didn't go to the city once for six months and I was making a record up in the trees in the hills you know about 20 minutes from where I am and um and so making a record with the luxury of time and to be in a position to like take the time in studio so it's not when you when the song isn't coming to or the recording isn't coming to stepping out Mm. And, um, and I think that made the record one, what I'd say I'm really stoked about with the record is that I feel like it is a fairly, um, even with a lot of different topical stuff and it's not all just happy go lucky songs, but I feel like the overall vibe is fairly, um, calm. I'd say like, if I look to laps around the sun, when I listen to them side by side, the only way I could describe it is it's like, it felt like this album kind of just shifted into like a, Mm. a more settled place and maybe that also I, I wanted this record not to shout at people I wanted to like I didn't want to get people's attention by being the loudest the loudest the brightest the mm. look at look here look here kind of record hence even why little things like why there is capitals on the song titles which it's a nightmare for my team but it, <laughs> the point partly the point in part was kind of to not be shouting to kind of try and to not be vying for attention in the way that's so common in how we market Mm. and operate in general in how you're trying to make your way through the music world. You know, I want it to be singing, not shouting, you know, and I think the record overall has a fairly settled sense to it. And that's, um, was a big achievement for me. Mm. It's, it's, it's that, that old kind of adage of saying that if you, if you whisper, um, you know, people kind of, uh, come in closer and and listen um you know with with intention versus having something kind of thrust at you as well and i think it also talks to a confidence um you know at at a stage of your career where um you know you believe in the songs you believe uh in the you know in in what they can bring um and that yeah you don't need to shout it from the rooftops Um, and if anything you know settle in and 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 engage with them, you know, with the songs. If you're going to really get the the true essence of what you know, what you're singing about, uh, which I think is, yeah, that's that is that's it's not common, um, and it's uh, it's lovely. Thank you. It's it was, I think the biggest the biggest goal because it's been so, I mean, talking about this makes me think of sitting with was sitting with a friend at a local little cafe. Um, and he's at that point in his career, fantastic musician, Teoski. And um, and he's kind of, he hasn't done the things that I've done yet, you know, to speak into like that. There's a lot of people who had their plans to go and do 
that big world tour to go do this, to go do that. And like I said to him, I was like, I've, I've, I've done more than I ever even planned on doing. I didn't even have a bucket. I didn't even have like my list of this is what I got to achieve Mm. in my career, you know, and have achieved so much more than what I ever set out or planned or ever dreamed of doing. And, um, and with this record, I just might like, it was such a forefront of my mind to try and bring the best energy I could to the songs, you know, like I just want, I just wanted it to be good for people. Like that's the only way I could say is I wanted the songs to be good for people. That's like mm. um, su- successful in whatever way or this, that, the other, but like, that stuff was secondary to like, I just want these songs to be good for people. You know, that's. Mm, and, and it's, it's, that, key, it's important yeah. to you, you know, it's a, it's a case of if you, if you engage with them, um, they can be good for you. So your, your will or your hope is take the time, engage with them and they will uh, hopefully reward the listener as much as they've clearly rewarded you in, in, in their creation. Absolutely. I think that's, I mean, that's the, the beauty of music is such, like I feel as a listener of all the music that I listen to, like, oh, you just, there's so many, there's so many times you look up and you're like, thank goodness that person wrote this song, you know, mm-hmm. it's like, it's such a, it's such an intrinsic part of the human experience and human um, connectivity, how we process things, like how, how you how you feel connected to the world i think you know mm-hmm. in um and good songs take you there that's True. for sure no definitely i mean that's the power of music and we could talk at nauseum about that because it, it is it's <laughs> a, you know besides keeping you sane um but i was i was wondering because you you know you're such a flipping rock star on things like spotify and you have eye-watering numbers of streams uh, so there's a lot of data you know that's available to you know the likes of you um and i wondered if if any part of that um informed and informs the you know certainly on this record yeah did you find yourself looking for commonalities in 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 kind of the 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 songs that had more streams than others and trying to kind of understand at a distance what um you know what those triggers were um that kind of got people excited about a particular song you know and you know to the point that you know that, that you considered that in writing you know uh, some of the material for this record yeah it's a, um it's that's a great question um I'd say the song that I'd say the song that's I'd say the song that really kind of went head and shoulders at one point that kind of broke through to what I think anyway was Runaway, which was really hilarious because Runaway was a song I recorded for basically there was an advertisement and they needed a song. And this is six years ago. And I didn't want to give them my best song. Mm. And so I was like, I'll give them my second best song, you know. Yeah, and it was a song called "Runaway," and that's kind of really broke my name into so many places, which is just utterly hilarious. Um, and that was something we recorded willy nilly in about two days. Like we put our best effort in, but it was not something we 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 did that in two days. Mm. Um, mixed it and went and got mastered. It was like it was not a mm. um, what's the word? A single. It was not a hectic. <laughs> yeah, it was. Just, it was like it was fairly a simple a simple thing and um and i think that for me i would say i with this album what i did consider is that i i look at stories like a flow a kind of thing the same way i kind of look at sets live music sets i like to try and start somewhere obviously um an album i think typically you you come forward with your i find you you start on a high note and you dip it down you bring it up towards the end is like how i think you approach an album and yeah. I'd say that that's flipped a little bit with a live set. You start up to go down and get to your crescendo moment. Cause I think the first, I feel like by accident, it was actually not on purpose, but we had all like basically all the singles we released were tracks two to five. 
mm-hmm. which I would have done differently, but we didn't know at the time that would be the case, you know? Um, oh, I, th- I think what I look, I look at similarities, like as far as for me, I guess to answer the question is short is that on this record, I, I wanted to have like a piano song. I like to have a piano moment on the record. Mm. And I like to have like a really stripped back ballad moment on the record, but that's less, that's less driven by them being successful and more like more. That's how I want the dynamic of the record to play out. And so I would like to have a kind of, I I do want a couple quite upbeat songs on the record because that's how I like, that's a dynamic. I like as a part of my live set. I like as a part of the record. And, um, but who would have guessed, for example, like we've, so we put out together, we mm. recorded it and released it in like a, we recorded, I basically wrote it, recorded it, released it in about a month. And that was, yeah, yeah it was like a crazy turnaround because we had a bunch of, we had really big fires and I wrote it inspired trying to rally people together through that intense period yeah. in Australia mm-hmm. and, um, and raise a bit of money. Mm. And so raise a bit of money for the cause and long story short, that is, still the head and shoulders song off the record at you know mm-hmm. i don't know 12 or 13 million streams you know which is right. that may be that may be as good as a song has ever done for me you know and that there seems to be a commonality between the songs that are written just for like the importance of the song being written yeah and re- yeah. recorded without a lot of pressure because yeah. i think what happens is you think as an artist these the songs you think will be the single will be will be the hit and frankly, people just tell you, like the fans and the listeners will tell you naturally what comes to the surface, you know. Mm. Um, Which is so we take it. Yeah. yeah, it's lovely because you, as you say, you don't know, or well, you assume. And I think as the body of work grows, it becomes a lot noisier for you to go, um, you know. And then, like you said, the ones that you kind of weren't indifferent about, but that you were. Uh, you just got on with it uh, with no agenda. There was not to say that any, any song has ever, is ever contrived, but you did it just because, you know, and you, uh, yeah. So as I said, like there was, there was no agenda, no intention, like going, I really believe in the song and I think it's going to be, you know, my best one yet. Um, And, you know, and then yet off it goes. And that's the, the joy of the algorithm. It's like, if you could figure that out, um, you know, we'd all be rather wealthy. And <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, it seems like it seems like somehow it seems like the relaxed, the relaxed approach that was exactly the opposite of making a hit is yeah. what songs have done best. Like every, if I think of like the songs that do perform best, they're not the songs that you're like that's going to be the hit. Yeah, they're the songs that you like write because you really need to write them. Or we're fairly relaxed about, which is mm. hilarious. Yeah, well, it, it it it's it just shows you how kind of connected I think the audience is is that uh, they like you when you're not parading. <laughs> you know, I, I I think you're right. I think sub I think subconsciously and I think sub like subliminally that people, I think the human experience, the human um, sensitivity picks up on that way more than we even know. Mm. Like, I think it really does. Um, and that's why I think it's important to go in and make, when you're writing, when you're recording songs, I really try and be present in the story. I'm not just trying to like hit notes, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's so important. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think I've been to, to live concerts where you can, uh, you can absolutely see it, uh, you know, and, and you can take some of the biggest bands in the world who don't necessarily need to, you know, they can pitch up and everyone will just be completely happy that they did. Uh, but when they're absolutely engaged in it, um, it just, it makes it even more special, I think, uh, which is amazing. Which kind of leads me on to the next question, which was the, the live stream you did um, in March. Take us through that experience, because obviously that was the exact opposite to what you had done the previous year. <laughs> Yeah, I would say in a word, it was all intense. Um, so start of the year, we so we brought out 
the, you know, he brought out, I think it was Letting Go. Mm. We, so he brought our new single. We released a poetry book. Um, so self, yeah, self-published a poetry book. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> In the room. Yeah. And, um, and then we and now released the album and then announced the live stream and I had to kind of build the live sound and rehearse the songs, which for once, the way I used to record stuff, for example, record albums, is I knew the songs so well and that's why I went and did them for the album. Whereas this one, I wrote some of the songs during the album process because I was just inspired by the recording process and wrote songs during the record. Mm -hmm. So then I had this pretty major task of trying to pull that all together for a live set. Um, so it was, it was fairly daunting and very, very intense simply because I went from being, we, amongst my friends, we call it match fit. Like I went from being a match fit, you know, player mm. to like my life, my life is not indicative of like the shows I was playing. So, you know, last shows I played in Australia were like, I don't know, like, isn't like the biggest show was 13 and a half thousand people sold out. And, you know, the smallest show was, I don't know, was it a couple thousand people saying like, it was all crazy big shows, all ridiculous. And like my day to day life is more one of a surfer. And it's like biking around the little town I live in. I live in a little beach shack and like, there's no front fence. Like it's, so it's really bizarre. Like everything it feels like such a past life experience all of the live performing and the the bright lights and all that stuff mm. and so um doing the live stream was it was mostly it was intense and doing it was really euphoric because there's things that you miss about playing shows that you don't know that you miss to be there again mm. Maybe that's a coping mechanism. Maybe you just block it out because if you can't do it, you just block out that experience. Mm. Um, but there was like eating chocolate and chips backstage. I was like, I miss chocolate and chips mm -hmm. with my, mm -hmm. you know, with my Motley crew backstage. And I miss, I miss the weird Motley crew of what is being a musician of the music industry that, you know, not the, not, not the contrived part of it, the actual people on the ground and everything, yeah. you know, yeah, you miss that interaction of this weird um, tour family thing that you have going in this gypsy lifestyle, essentially of traveling around the world. Just those things that kind of um, it's a fine life to live. That's for sure. I've thought many times it's a fine life to live city hopping in a bus mm. or in a van and you know going to all these different places in the world and the experience you have. And, and so the whole experience was intense but then very very euphoric because we also had like we had like a hundred plus family and friends and people who worked on the record upstairs in the venue and then downstairs was like hardcore um long time subscribers who got offered the tickets to come and see the show and so that everyone was just so happy it was just such a it was such a fantastic moment and a great precursor to hopefully the shows that we do Mm. Um, moving forward with the new album because mm -hmm. I think that for a lot of um, the considerations around <clears throat> you know the last of 18 months uh, yeah, give or take it's it's there are elements that you can when you know when you are out there um, playing to bigger rooms um, that you'll bring a lot of that along as well and and grow the room um, because you can um and you know i think the the technology aside you know if you can have ten thousand people in a room and then you can have another hundred thousand kind of virtually uh plugging in i just think that uh you know just takes it to an to to a whole new level um in a way that so many bands you know it, it was a novel thing to do you know to to do a live concert you know, to television or whatever the case may be. Whereas this is quite different, um, I think, because it's, you've got two communities, you've got the in the room community, and then you've got this live community, and uh, they're inextricably bound by your music, which um, I think is remarkable. And you, you, you spoke about uh, Brainwaves, um, your book of poetry, um, which is absolutely amazing. It's, it's one of the most calming 
poetry books I've ever read because it literally, you know, if it, my recommendation is if anybody suffers from any level of anxiety, you know, have this by, you know, have this close by. And when you have those moments, you literally, yeah, it just dissolves. Uh, so very awesome. rich, very rich in, uh, yeah, in, in its ability to achieve that. But would brainwaves, to me, I, initially when I, when I wrote the question, it was, you know, is it a complementary supplement? Um, and then after I'd, I'd sent the questions through, I thought, no, well, it isn't, it isn't. It doesn't have to be, right? But if you have both and you're engaged with both, then it just pops. Mm. I think it became, I think it, I think it absolutely, it, again, it was fairly accidental, but it's absolutely become a new dimension that fits with the album. And I would absolutely consider releasing the next poetry book with another album because mm. they seem to have had such a great um life together and and they are complementary of each other like i think they are vice versa like i think there is there is people who i i saw my first youtube comment start you know earlier in the year that someone had discovered my music the first time i saw someone discovered my music because of the poetry book amazing and that was yeah that was brilliant um yeah very it's very um it's so funny because there's not a lot of lyrical crossover from brainwaves. Brainwaves isn't, for the most part, most of it isn't um, in lyrics. And that's really cool. And I have felt them very, I, it's almost like the stuff from brainwaves is what bubbles to the surface from stillness. And it's from the busyness, looking over at my guitar, it's from the busyness of life that I write my songs. So they're kind of like, that's the best way I can say how they have both come to life. It's, it's been uh, brainwaves. I felt was very, uh, for lack of a better word, like a pure project because it was so, it just came out of, it came out of well, one, it came out of um, meditation, which was driven for me by just feeling like I just need that the busyness wasn't, I wasn't getting settled through continued busyness. Mm. And so one day, one day I went and sat on the beach and was like, I just need to sit down to I figure something out. And I realized just like sitting down and doing nothing was exactly what I needed to do. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so it became this personal thing that I did and took around me all around the world. That was for the joy of doing it because it had nothing to do with any career based thing. And that is a special place because once you release the book, then you do stuff like and that doesn't that doesn't make it less special for me but what i mean is just that it was born out of the same place that music was born out of first which is just like this thing that you do it's not mm. because i'm going to be a musician i didn't go i'm going to be a poet i wrote poetry because it made me feel it helped me make sense of what i kind of realized it yeah. helped me make sense of what i was realizing and i felt like it was important to write it down at least for me it and then if other people roadmap yeah 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 I actually wrote a song called roadmaps the other day <laughs> that's great i'm just aware of the time i think i'm um i've, I've, I've overrun by eight minutes so i apologize <laughs> profusely <laughs> that's fine we're having that like, i love it's it's great through um i i gen you know this is the thing you're supposed to say but there really has been truly incredible uptake of um support from south africa with this album i felt like uh for the the listeners in south africa and the amount of fantastic conversations i've had have been truly just a treat it's been really um been one of my favorite favorite things i know you should say this about each <laughs> yeah, <sure. laughs> but it's truly been like uh, south africa is just above your head by the way if you turn around the, the, the way you are situated your your commitment is is re is real. You can't fake That's that. That's awesome. That's fantastic. Yeah, it, look, it it truly has like the support we feel like we've had coming from South Africa through this um, new album and it, how it's yeah it's been it's truly been a real joy and it makes me really excited to the prospect of coming over there and mm. coming and 
experiencing the country and playing playing some shows and stuff you know mm-hmm. that's what I hope you know and so it's just a very exciting thing and and makes me you know I've had lots of really great conversations with a, a so many different pieces of so many different music um, people from South Africa, which has been just, yeah, really a treat. Mm, yeah, you, you very much loved. And I think uh, Malcolm Roddy, who looks after you here, is arguably your, your biggest, uh, biggest fan and um, champions you at every corner. So, um, you know, thanks to her for, for the introduction, because I, I didn't get there on my own but once I did um yeah you've 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 got another you you have another one so now you have you have you have another fan <laughs> but thank awesome. you uh, so much for your time and um we look forward to your your uh, your return to South Africa hopefully in the not too distant future um but in the meantime we have beautiful poetry we have a beautiful album life is sweet Awesome. Now, like I said, it's um, it's something I look forward to as well. And on behalf of our whole independent family team, we just are, uh, particularly through this time where we're not touring, we're just so stoked to have the support and we're glad everybody's resonating. And um, I hope you guys are, are healthy and well over there during this interesting time in humanity. Yeah, likewise. And thank you again for the time. And uh, as I say, stay well, stay Stay on the water and uh, and yeah, stay safe. Yeah, we need you in one piece. You know, don't don't take <laughs> don't do that one wave that you shouldn't do. <laughs> I'll keep it. I'll keep it in mind. <laughs> Great, thanks so much, sir. Have a good day. Good pleasure. Thank you, my friend. Cheers. Speak to you again. Yes. Cheers.